Hello, uh, welcome everybody to uh, this uh, uh, Open Air Graph uh, community call. Uh, I am uh, very happy to be here today uh, to explain uh, and uh, um, give you some kind of insights uh, on how research libraries uh, are uh, contributing to the Open Air Graph and the work that we are uh, doing in Open Air. Uh, so, first of all, um, I think uh, that uh, um, one uh, uh, important uh, uh, clarification uh, that I must uh, uh, give to you by going uh, into meetings, uh, by speaking uh, uh, with you uh, offline, is uh, to clarify what is the difference between the open air graph and open air. Uh, because while uh, for us is uh, uh, clear, uh, some people uh, still uh, um, have a confusion about uh, uh, open air as an organization that is composed by uh, national experts in uh, uh, Europe that are at the front front uh, of fostering uh, open science practices and the open air graph which is our backbone services uh, that is offering a database uh, that from a different kind of point of view uh, can be uh, can offer different uh, possibilities of use and this is why we created added value services so open air as an organization as uh, um, has been established in 2018 as a legal entity because before uh, there were several projects uh, to build uh, and uh, uh, to build the network and to build services uh, for uh, um, the um, open uh, science practices uh, uh, research community and also to create awareness and training and uh, support uh, to upskill this community. So. The organization is uh, a scholarly uh, is made by a scholarly communication infrastructures that brings together human capital and advanced ICT services. And if you are curious to know as Open Air as organization what we are doing, please have a look to our strategy priorities from the previous year. Of course, one of uh, uh, our biggest pillars uh, is the services that are at the core uh, of open air because what we would like to bring to the community is a technology to facilitate the practices of uh, open science. So what is the key role of uh, the librarian, the researcher librarian? So in a way that we see you or maybe I see you is that you have a key role in open science because um, you have collected the support, uh, you have a direct contact with uh, um, the researchers uh, at any level, in particular you also train uh, early career researchers in uh, uh, the practices of uh, uh, open science and research, you support, you negotiate with the uh, publisher uh, in order to um, uh, support and bring the value and uh, correct the way we are cataloging uh, uh, the research. In this way, you are uh, at the forefront of the FAIR principle because you help uh, the researchers uh, to uh, bring valuable data uh, in, uh, um, in uh, uh, external community, you also are in charge of tracking resources, services and tools that help not only at the research level to make an impact, but also in the researcher's assessment or, or research assessment, even better, um, in which you are uh, looking at the investments from uh, the maybe national policies, maybe universities policies to track what uh, is uh, at the end the uptake and the behavior of the researchers. 
and also in this way you can support uh, the decision uh, makers at the institutional level in uh, how to invest in open science. For instance, uh, you uh, see that uh, during uh, uh, a year you had uh, spent a lot of money in uh, uh, article processing charges, so you may um, discuss about the novel Diamond Open Access journals or the possibility of, to, of having uh, um, of having uh, much more support uh, in uh, the creation of journals or to have uh, uh, much more uh, um, hours allocated in the training of early career researchers to explain alternative publishing models uh, or uh, uh, to support in the archive in open science, uh, in open access uh, uh, green repository and so on. So going from publishing to assessing, uh, we know that the research life cycle is made of different uh, uh, components, but every of these components, uh, which is a uh, physiological way, so you plan, uh, uh, so the researchers plan uh, the research uh, to plan, they have to collect and discover other resources, what others have done. They have to analyze and process the data, they publish, they archive, and this is where you are at the forefront. And also in the assessment, you also support the decision makers in a more stronger way. Uh, in any case, even if uh, we speak about cycle, we know that in the digital era, everything is connected. Uh, so we um, are often speaking about a web of uh, fair data. And uh, um, of course, in this, uh, uh, what we pushed in particular, uh, um, even before the COVID, but with the COVID became uh, much more ev um, evident, is that uh, for having the biggest and uh, uh, bootstrapping uh, uh, solution, we need to collaborate. And also uh, we need uh, to enhance the quality of uh, the um, way we are uh, sharing research and data. So from publishing to assessment, uh, where uh, you are contributing. So uh, the librarians uh, are key in this phase. Uh, in uh, um, most of you uh, are uh, even directly or uh, indirectly with colleagues. Uh, you uh, look at uh, open access journals, uh, repositories, uh, CRIS, uh, and also you may have a role in uh, uh, funding databases, so you may speak with, uh, for example, National Contact Point uh, uh, for Horizon or uh, with the ministries uh, or having uh, uh, association that supports you in uh, uh, the way uh, you are uh, negotiating. So you are fundamental in bringing uh, these uh, resources. Uh, where Open Air can support here is uh, uh, we uh, work together with uh, our network of experts uh, in the creation of uh, uh, guidelines uh, that helps uh, in uh, um, collecting uh, literatures, software, uh, data repositories uh, um, and expose uh, this kind of data to make it interoperable with uh, other sources. From this, uh, we asked, uh, um, we create a service that is called Open Air Provide, um, that uh, is uh, uh, aggregating the uh, data sources that are registering. Uh, I would recommend if uh, uh, you forgot how we are collecting and aggregating the data to uh, go back to the uh, re recording of the community call uh, from uh, Claudio Azzori. And uh, if I remember well, it was uh, uh, the second or the third uh, community call. Uh, so with this registration, 
the added value of this service is that uh, we are offering a dashboard in which uh, we are communicating with you about the update of uh, uh, the data sources. So we are providing you information about how we are reaching uh, the metadata information from which sources, how often, if uh, we spot uh, uh, any issue or uh, metadata that are not complete, that uh, need, require your attention in uh, the curation or uh, um, in uh, find uh, the um, uh, correct metadata. And uh, we uh, extra curate uh, in uh, the open air graph. The open air graph uh, um, is receiving uh, other uh, information from other uh, data sources that are either uh, registries like uh, um, ROR um, or uh, ORCID or uh, uh, other sources or even uh, the OIJ. Uh, and uh, other uh, kind of initiatives so like Crossref data sites, uh, uh, Open Citation, Open APC that are providing extra information like uh, citations uh, and uh, um, other uh, information. Then in the Open Air Graph, we are uh, uh, providing uh, API that uh, serves for discovery, bibliometrics, and open science monitoring. And uh, we also uh, have provided a new service that is called OpenOrgs that uh, is uh, um, a um, community of curators that help us uh, to the uh, disambiguation of organization. What that means? That, for example, uh, there are universities that uh, in uh, research articles are mentioned either uh, as uh, the entire name or uh, with uh, a name in another language or with a acronym. So in our database, uh, what the algorithm is uh, finding is that uh, it's finding three different uh, organizations and we are wondering if it's the same. So usually the librarians uh, help us in this, uh, that are willing to do this uh, kind of creation to improve the metadata quality, they go to this system and they said, yes, this is the same organization, no, these are different organizations. Moreover, in OpenOrgs, uh, we also found uh, a way to uh, create uh, a parent-child relationship. This parent-child relationship means that we can recognize the departments and the sub institutions that are part of the same university. Uh, we also offer uh, another service that, uh, let's say, gives uh, the possibility to the researchers and also to you as librarians uh, and data stewards in a university to make sure that uh, the researchers during the uh, projects are able to uh, provide enough metadata uh, to describe uh, their uh, research activities. And this is uh, in, in, in a way that uh, it can be interoperable with the graph and contributes to enrich uh, the metadata information and to provide link between uh, uh, publication, data sets, uh, software. Uh, we also have another service that is called Open Air Broker um, that uh, uh, helps uh, um, to um, uh, create uh, the, the final uh, metadata um, in a way that uh, is very comprehensive uh, to the final users. So you have seen many times <laughs> these slides. Uh, you know that uh, the Open Air Graph uh, um, value are uh, exactly what you see here. So to be open, complete, uh, deduplicated, transparent, uh, participatory, decentralized and trust. Uh, I, I want to focus here in the par uh, participatory. As I show you uh, in the previous slides, uh, you have an active role on it if you would uh, like to take it. Uh, there are key characteristics of the OPD graph. And again, here uh, I would like also to keep your attention in the fact that we believe that the OPD graph is a uh, public good. Uh, it means that 
if you are sharing resources in OpenAir, we keep the license that you would like to use. Uh, we recommend the CC by zero, so the OpenAir graph is CC by zero, but your content uh, depends on the license that uh, you gave uh, in uh, a repository in uh, uh, specific sources. So the researchers are also in charge to establish uh, the uh, license for uh, uh, what they are producing. And this is important when we train uh, researchers uh, to become, let's say, open scientists. <clears throat> So you know that uh, uh, the open air graph, uh, um, it's uh, used in scientific dis discovery, in bibliometrics and open science monitoring. Uh, probably in the next call, we will clarify also uh, how the uh, open air graph contributes to the EOSC AU node, uh, the new um, uh, European Open Science uh, Cloud uh, portal. Uh, in uh, bibliometrics, uh, it, it can, um, let's say, the aim is to provide an alternative or um, to complete, let's say, the information that you have from um, a, a database that is uh, um, community-driven. Community-driven because we uh, believe that the librarians and all the members of OpenAir are, um, are contributing in the governance of, uh, um, the, uh, of what we are producing as a service. Uh, say that we are also offering extra uh, tools to track and to monitor uh, the activities. Uh, we are working very hard in indicators, and these indicators can be visible in the Open Science Monitoring uh, services that are uh, Open Air Monitor, uh, Open Science Observatory, and we are also contributing in the USC uh, Open Science Observatory. So the next steps is that we are working on large language models in better APIs. And we are also now starting a new country monitor. The Irish National Open Access Monitor was the first. Uh, let's say that the, the biggest uh, uh, particularity, uh, but uh, um, we are also um, working with uh, uh, other uh, uh, countries to uh, check uh, uh, what are the open science practices that are following maybe the national policies or even institutional policies. If you would like, for example, uh, to know how the behavior is changing in a specific context. Uh, to clarify here, uh, in uh, um, the Open Air Graph uh, web page, you also can find uh, what, is, what, what are the difference between the Open Air Graph and the property uh, database. So uh, here it's like an idea that we are giving to you. Uh, because the open air graph is collecting uh, a, a huge number of uh, uh, several research type. So we are not just collecting publications, but also data sets, uh, software. And even in the publication, we are also um, collecting uh, uh, DMP. Uh, so data management plan, we are collecting uh, thesis, uh, uh, everything that is produced uh, during uh, our research uh, life cycle. So we call everything that is uh, produced during uh, this moment uh, research products, uh, which uh, is including the research input and the research output. Funders and grants are what we are asking the funders to share with us in order to bring value and other information and link 
a project, a publication with uh, um, a grant uh, that is used. This is very useful if the funders would like to understand uh, the return of uh, investments, but also um, making uh, evidence-based policy that can uh, foster the um, that can foster uh, the possibility of uh, um, of uh, um, uh, of uh, giving an overview, an oversight about uh, uh, a research project. And uh, the Open Air Graph is uh, free because it's supported by uh, European uh, grants. So, uh, okay. Um, Added value is that uh, a bit, we went beyond a little bit the other research database because we are also collaborating with uh, other uh, infrastructures and uh, services and initiatives to um, uh, to provide uh, other uh, information and metrics. For example, uh, we uh, are uh, uh, automatically uh, classify uh, with the artificial intelligence uh, the field of science, uh, or uh, we are performing text mining to um, link a publication with the um, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we are providing open access indicators and we discuss with the community what could be uh, interesting for them to understand. And this uh, uh, we do by, uh, by creating uh, uh, the, the open air graph and uh, bringing added value services. So where uh, you are contributing? You are contributing in provided data sources. You are contributing in using added value services and provide us feedback. And uh, if uh, you want also, you help us in collecting feedback. So you may uh, use the explore or the connect functionality in linking a database with uh, an article, an article with a project and so on. You may train uh, researchers in claim their ORCID and to create a better page in uh, ORCID regarding uh, uh, the researchers, they, the research they are performing. You are, uh, uh, if you want, uh, you can be part of OpenOrgs, as I explained before. You can report uh, uh, errors uh, or uh, provide feedback in uh, our help desk. Also discuss uh, case studies uh, in uh, these uh, community calls uh, or uh, in the forum as the forum of the Open Air Graph uh, that my colleagues are posting in the chat. The discovery service of Open Air are Explore and Connect. Uh, basically, they are the user interface of the Open Air Graph. The user interface of the Open Air Graph is Explore. Connect is the vision that some community, um, uh, some community or research infrastructures would like to give either to same topics, either to a federation of uh, uh, repositories um, or an alliance of universities that want to expose uh, their own specific uh, um, research. And this may be useful if uh, uh, researchers have to do, for example, uh, an, er an Erasmus project, so they are using uh, the uh, they may use the uh, University Alliance service to see where uh, uh, they would like to perform research or where they want to learn more about some uh, uh, topic of interest. Uh, monitoring, as I said before, uh, we have several dashboards. Uh, the Open Air Monitor is offering uh, a view uh, from a university level. Um, Research, um, research funding level and the research uh, communities uh, or initiatives uh, or infrastructures. While uh, the national uh, view, you can see the Open Science Observatory. 
The national case of the Open Science Monitor is that uh, in one single page we provided uh, five dashboards, the one that you see here up. So the national monitor, uh, the monitor for research performing organization, monitor for research funding organization, monitor for the researchers, is coming soon uh, a researcher profile uh, pilots, uh, repository monitors, and uh, we also create, of course, materials uh, in supports and help in the construction, in the explanation of where we get the data from. As I said, uh, uh, we have projects that are contributing uh, in uh, uh, research assessment because we know that most of you are uh, also signatory of uh, uh, COARA, uh, but uh, uh, and uh, uh, you would like also to make the best use of EOSC. Uh, one of uh, these uh, case studies is uh, um, to find uh, a solution for uh, supporting you in the research assessment. And CRASPOS is an infrastructure, a project that aim to build a federated infrastructure that is composed of several services uh, to bring added value to uh, the research track and the open science monitors. Um, one of the development that we are working on is called the researcher profile, so the vision from the researcher point of view. And uh, we, um, we are working on uh, narratives to be included in uh, this new um, service, a different way to present uh, um, the research output, and also how to capture, uh, capture this information from um, interoperability with other services and tools. So what uh, to construct this, uh, we used uh, uh, other projects metrics, uh, starting uh, with uh, uh, the Opus projects that bring uh, an indicator uh, toolbox. Um, and uh, um, about all uh, the research activities in general and uh, um, what my uh, colleagues uh, worked very hard uh, to is uh, to understand from these uh, um, indicators, uh, from this uh, added value of the um, researchers activities uh, where open science could fit. So, uh, this uh, was part of the studies in which um, uh, my colleague uh, Zenia has uh, worked uh, in uh, integration of Opus of Pathos, which is another project that is looking at the research impact. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, she started uh, to build this uh, um, this uh, um, uh, new service. <clears throat> so very briefly, just to give you an idea, uh, is uh, based uh, on uh, an idea from uh, a researcher of uh, uh, the CNR uh, who uh, used uh, this, uh, um, uh, this way to present their activities uh, uh, during uh, um, a recruitment process. Uh, so we also um, uh, try to integrate this idea in uh, a specific uh, uh, mock. Uh, I will not go to, into deep because from these slides, uh, um, everything has uh, really evolved in uh, the last uh, uh, months. So what are the opportunities to work with you? Uh, the idea uh, to work with librarians is uh, to have synergy and interplay. So you are contributing, as I said, uh, with the CRIS uh, repositories uh, and uh, um, help us in the discoverability and uh, ensuring that the metadata information are available, uh, accessible and discoverable and properly attributed. You are announcing the metadata, the indexing. You are helping us uh, in uh, um, shape the standard, the standards of uh, um, interoperability guidelines and data format. Uh, you are uh, supporting uh, in uh, tracking uh, the impact and to check if uh, what we are reporting is wrong. 
uh, in, uh, in our uh, uh, database because as we are integrating several data sources, uh, we may have some bugs in the algorithm. So uh, if uh, you are supporting us in uh, uh, giving uh, uh, information, we are improving the data quality of the open air graph. And then uh, compliance management because uh, um, we uh, uh, help uh, in leveraging uh, uh, the information with open infrastructures that may um, substitute or integrate what you are using with the commercial services. In any case, the open graph is uh, free, so uh, uh, we are very happy uh, to see uh, how you can transform uh, the way you are uh, performing research. Um, you also are free to join us as a members. So at the moment, uh, we have 52 members in Europe from 36 countries. You can uh, uh, support uh, the National Open Access Nodes and uh, be part of ANAMECO, uh, which means that is a national member uh, uh, community. Uh, and uh, uh, also what is also important for me to share is that while open air as organization is mainly European or in the European area, our collaborators are going beyond um, beyond uh, the uh, the U beyond Europe. For example, um, now um, we are uh, uh, we are closely um, announcing uh, uh, the new collaboration uh, uh, with La Reference and what are the next steps for our collaboration. We work uh, with Japan, with uh, Korea, with uh, uh, other uh, uh, organizations. So we are also open to membership, mainly in Europe, because most of uh, our resources are coming uh, from uh, Europe. Uh, but we are happy to discuss uh, collaboration outside Europe as well. Uh, with this, uh, uh, I would leave the floor for uh, uh, questions. Don't forget to subscribe to the forum and to um, use it as uh, a way to share different uh, uh, case studies and how you are using the open air graph. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Julia. So uh, now, uh, as Julia said, we'll open the floor to questions. Um, I see we have a couple that just were in uh, put in the Q&A. So mm -hmm. first, the first question is, um, is the APIs for Open Air Graph available freely? I know I can maybe answer this. I don't know if the, yes. anyone from the tech team is here. <laughs> Um, that can maybe elaborate more, but the short answer is yes, yes. And I can send a link to um, where you can find the APIs and how to use them uh, in the chat now. Um, and the, the guide will take you through how to use the APIs. And also recently, the um, we just uh, had a new beta version of the APIs that are working on being released. Um, they should be released by the end of the year, but we just went through a beta testing phase, which is what we presented in last month's Open Air Graph community call. So I will link that here um, in the chat where you can find all the information in the documentation. Uh, second question was, how often is the data updated? Okay. Uh, so just uh, to complete with uh, uh, your uh, uh, the previous questions, uh, uh, you also can find uh, in the Open Air documentation, the beginner kit. Uh, and uh, uh, there was also uh, a community call entirely dedicated to that. Uh, I think it's the third or the fourth community call. Uh, but if uh, you are interested in using the beginner kit uh, and you cannot find uh, in the web page, let us know and uh, we will uh, guide you uh, through it. Uh, say that uh, the question was uh, how often the binary graph uh, is updating. Usually, more or less every month. Uh, so we say the between four and six uh, weeks. Um, 
and uh, the API are auto-generated every month. So for example, if uh, you are uh, um, you open a connect uh, gateway, also all the APIs of the public gateways are updated in the same way. If you have a monitor, also the information in the monitor are updated with the graph. Then what we do is that every six months, uh, usually um, between uh, December and January and between uh, uh, June, July, uh, we are publishing uh, uh, the um, what we call the data snapshots or dump, the open air graph dump. And uh, what we are publishing is uh, um, three different, uh, let's say, kind of dump. Uh, the first one is the uh, complete about the open air graph. Uh, which is as complete as possible, but uh, uh, we understand that uh, it's uh, very heavy. Um, then we have uh, a dump from founders that decided to openly share uh, the information and the dump from the community, um, the open air communities. Uh, the open air communities are uh, research initiatives, research infrastructures that have their own dump. Uh, this is uh, uh, interesting and important because uh, the fact that the open air graph is CC by zero is offering the opportunity to build uh, um, new software, uh, uh, to uh, reuse uh, the content for artificial intelligence to train a machine and so on. So we are very curious if you are uh, uh, performing uh, this kind of studies. So please keep us uh, informed and let us know of uh, what are you doing. Great, thanks. And then there was a third uh, question to this. And the third question was, if I want to create my own dashboard that will be open to public, so Open Air Monitor um, will be priced as far as I know, can I achieve this by getting the data from Open Air via API? Yes. So uh, you can either uh, use the Open Air Graph if uh, uh, if uh, you have uh, the human resources uh, uh, to work on uh, the APIs uh, or uh, uh, to have uh, um, to work on a specific section of the open air graph. So we are uh, completely happy uh, if uh, you are uh, using that. The added value of, uh, for example, uh, the uh, open air monitor dashboards or uh, uh, open air connect. Uh, gateways are uh, that uh, you have a user interface that is uh, helping you in uh, having uh, this kind of uh, data every month so you don't have uh, every time to wait for uh, a dump to be produced and build your own service. Uh, with our added value everything is updated uh, once uh, per month so uh, this is how we um, we are offering uh, you uh, more help. Moreover, uh, what uh, you are uh, supporting uh, is not, uh, uh, let's say, the, the subscription plans uh, that uh, we uh, put for uh, the Open Air Monitor, Open Air Connect, uh, and uh, some specific uh, installation and work for Arcus depends on the fact that we are providing you much more support. Uh, so you have to think about the maintenance of the service in uh, the cloud and uh, uh, the machine that are in support of uh, that kind of amount of data that we are sharing, that you are selecting for you, and also human resources to help you through. If you don't need this kind of package, of course, you can do on uh, your own because maybe the university has, uh, the university of, or the funders has uh, uh, the capacity to support uh, this kind of work. Uh, so we are uh, happy in any way you would like uh, to use the open air services. And of course, uh, we are uh, giving uh, you the maximum of our support.
Okay, thank you so much. I hope this answered the question. I think it did. And that's actually a perfect segue into another question that was actually in the registration form. So in the registration form, we did have a question, which was, what is the origin of data in the open air graph and how is it connected to the open air monitor dashboard? Okay. So the open air graph, uh, you have to consider that is uh, uh, a database uh, of uh, uh, different uh, authoritative uh, data. Uh, which includes uh, uh, persistence identifiers uh, that can come from uh, um, publication, so DOI, from uh, people with uh, ORCID or uh, other identifiers. For example, uh, we are collaborating in Portugal with uh, their uh, researchers' identifiers that is specific for the nation, uh, and we link them. Um, we are collecting information from registries, uh, as I said, uh, uh, organization IDs uh, and so on. And this is uh, one part of uh, the database. Uh, then whatever you uh, as uh, librarian, repository managers, uh, Chris managers uh, would like to expose or uh, to share with the public via uh, the open air graph. And uh, um, and that uh, is basically the data. The open air monitor is, uh, um, is made of uh, several tools uh, and uh, um, algorithm or uh, inference. Uh, so we have uh, research behind that, that builds charts from this kind of data. So what uh, the open air monitor is doing is that it collects this data and directly provide uh, you charts and statistics. So you don't have to calculate uh, and everything is very interactive. And uh, you can decide what to include or exclude, so what uh, to make it public or uh, to um, restrict. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions? I don't know if uh, another one come. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Claudio or Andrea uh, would like to uh, give uh, more information about what I have said uh, today. Uh, maybe Andrea uh, can uh, can also tell us uh, the initiatives that and the collaboration that we are having with uh, Eurocris. I don't know if uh, you would like to open your mic. Uh, we cannot hear you. Sorry, Andreas. Um, hello, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to say something about the collaboration with uh, Eurocris. Um, in, in over the years, um, Eurocris and OpenAir uh, developed together the OpenAir CRIS guidelines to um, expose the information of CRIS systems and to make it um, harvested, or harvested from the OpenAir aggregation system. And this collaboration is continued uh, over the last years and continued also this year's. And uh, um, we are happy about these collaboration and these um, results from uh, from this collaboration. Thank you, Andreas. And uh, also, uh, I I am happy to have you having you here because uh, uh, Andreas is uh, uh, is not also is not only helping us uh, in um, um, in the collaboration with uh, Eurocris, but. Uh, uh, he uh, had with the University of Bielefeld uh, a, um, a role in uh, the collaboration with, uh, with OpenAir uh, in uh, uh, providing uh, more uh, information that, for example, uh, can be seen in the OpenAir monitor 
for example, uh, uh, in the University of Peelfield, uh, where uh, Andreas uh, uh, works, uh, they built uh, OpenAPC, which is the one uh, service that is providing in the Open Air Monitor uh, information about the cost that are uh, spent from uh, the university at the library level on article processing charges, but also book uh, processing charges. Uh, so this is how a uh, librarian came with the idea of uh, answering to these questions from uh, administration, correct me, Andreas, if I'm wrong, and also kind of uh, uh, giving added value. Uh, another f interesting thing so that uh, for me was, uh, was good to see is that it's not only of interest of the university, but also founders are interested to know this kind of information. And uh, uh, with the collaboration between an infrastructure so that was built by a member of OpenAir that we include in the OpenAir catalog, we were able to provide this information also in the graph and in all the services that are interoperating with um, uh, uh, with OpenAir and the members. So if you are developing services uh, or algorithms or tools in this sense, let us know because we are very happy to collaborate with you. And we actually did have another uh, question regarding Chris Systems in the Q&A. Um, so, so you mentioned Chris Systems. In the open air guidelines for Chris managers, events, funding, project, and equipment entities are listed. Can this information from Chris System also be found in the open air graph in use in an institutional monitor? Yes. Quick answer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, Andreas, if uh, you uh, would like to add anything. Um, thank you very much. So for, um, I would like to uh, jump in here, but um, I, we are developing these um, entities uh, from the, the support of uh, in the CRIS systems and the guidelines are um, having these entities uh, for events, in instruments or equipment, and also for projects and funding. And, um, but I'm currently not involved in the integration of these entities into the graph, as well as the, in the pipeline uh, to use these information and, in, and entities in the uh, monitor dashboard. So uh, I would like to hand over to the technical team here. Yes, <laughs> so, so I see your need as so that I didn't see before. Yes, uh, thank you, Andreas. Uh, yes, uh, of course, we have this information. Uh, one uh, that can be shown in Monitor dashboard, with one comment for the funding information. It is essential that uh, the funder that is specified in the metadata has been registered into OpenAir. And we have the funder in OpenAir. If we don't have the funder in OpenAir, we cannot associate any metadata about the funding information. So if uh, and of course yeah. for the European Commission uh, and all the funders that are in open air, mm -hmm. when we have the metadata, we can also uh, we can also associate them in, in the monitor dashboard. So if uh, you have uh, this information in a Chris system and uh, uh, you find that this information are not present in the open air graph, let us know. Uh, because we um, we may um, ask uh, your help to bring us in contact with the funders uh, to um, register them as well. Uh, thanks, Leonidas, also for sharing uh, the, the page uh, of Explore in which you can browse through the funders that uh, we have in the Open Air Graph. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? And a reminder that if a question does pop up but later and you'd like to reach out to us, you can always do so via the help desk or we also strongly encourage 
you to use the Open Air Graph user form, which is a great way to engage with both the Graph team and also the community. Um, and again, as we've already mentioned a couple of times, you can always consult all previous community call materials on the Open Air Graph website as well. So I'm gonna share those links as well for the user form and help desk, um, just in case something pops up later, you never know. Thank you all very much. And uh, it was a pleasure uh, to be here today. And uh, thanks to my two colleagues, uh, Alena and uh, Stefania, uh, to be the direct contact for you um, in the Open Air Graph. Uh, and feel free to reach me out anytime uh, for more information of uh, what has been discussed today. Perfect. Thank you. And also a reminder to sign up for our next community call in December. Um, so as some of you may know, the EOS EU node recently went live, which aims to foster greater collaboration and innovation across the European, the Europe, across Europe's scientific landscape. Um, and the Open Air Graph has had the honor of being selected as the authoritative source for this. Um, so on our next call, we're going to dive into what does that exactly mean? What does being the authoritative source for the EOS EU node entail? Uh, so again, I'm just going to send the registration link. It's the same link as it was for this call. If you registered for this call, you had the option to register for December as well. But now you know the topic, so I'll be sending that here. Um, and I'll also send an article which we recently published that explains a little bit more the node. Um, and in that article, you also have the direct link to the official um, announcement from the European Commission as well. So you have these two references to give you a bit of a general idea of what the node is. Um, and the official announcement is on the EOS EU node website, which we encourage you to, to browse through and explore because there's a lot of really, really interesting services um, that help foster collaboration <laughs> and research across Europe. So we'll send those here now, again in the chat. And then it looks like we don't have any more questions. Just one more second. If not, we can wrap up. <laughs> all right okay all right well thank you again everybody for joining us and we'll hopefully see you next month uh, for our next community call have a lovely rest of your day bye <laughs>